Who are you? Why are you doing this? What? What's in the box? Oh my god. No. You can't make me do it. I won't do it. I'm not gonna review another blue yeti. So today, of sound mind and completely free will, I am reviewing the brand new Blue Yeti X. If you are interested in this microphone, it'll set you back around $170. Like always, I'll throw some links in the description down below. Sorry about that guy, he's kind of forcing me to do this video. Regardless, for the majority of this video, I will have the Yeti X connected directly to my Mac, recording 24-bit 48 kilohertz with the gain set just at about 9 o'clock. I will not do any kind of post-processing, but I may boost it in post, so check the doobly-doo to see what I diddly did. And later in the video, I will connect the Yeti X to a Windows 10 PC and walk through all of the Blue Voice software because that is only available on Windows. And now let's talk about what comes in the box. Should have tried to hit the guy earlier. Of course, you are going to get the microphone. You get the desktop mount, which is already installed. You'll get the USB cable and a small amount of documentation, meaning a quick start guide. Next up, as far as the build quality, I really don't have any complaints about this microphone. It has an all metal body as well as a metal mesh grill, which does have a tiny bit of give to it. On the front of the microphone, you will find a single multi-purpose dial to control the gain, the headphone dial, and the blend between the microphone and the computer playback. To switch between these, all you have to do is hold down the button for one second to switch from gain to headphone volume, and hold it down for another second to switch from headphone volume to the blend mode. This dial is also a button, so you're able to press it down to mute or unmute your microphone, and around the dial, you will find a real-time meter so you know what kind of levels you're getting or if you're clipping. On the back of the microphone, you will find a single button to switch between the polar patterns, which are stereo, omnidirectional, cardioid, or bidirectional. And on the bottom of the microphone, you'll find a 5 8 inch threading so you can mount this to a standard microphone stand. Unfortunately, it does not come with a 5 8 to 3 8 inch adapter, so you will need to provide your own if you want to put this on a boom arm. There is a 3.5 millimeter headphone port, which does offer latency-free monitoring as well as computer playback, and you'll find the USB port to connect this to your computer. Next up, as far as the specs, the microphone has a cardioid, omnidirectional, bidirectional, and stereo polar pattern, a frequency response of 20 hertz to 20 kilohertz, a max SPL of 122 decibels, a bit depth of 24 bit, a sampling rate of 48 kilohertz, and it is compatible with both Windows and Mac, but only compatible with Windows if you want to use the Blue Voice functionality. Now let's go ahead and walk through all of the polar patterns so you can hear how they sound. Now I am spinning around the Yeti X on the cardioid mode to show you the off-axis rejection and coloration. We'll continue around the microphone to 180 degrees, show you what the null area looks like on the rear, continue around the microphone to the second 90 degree angle, and then we will rotate and end at the front of the microphone. Now I'm spinning around the microphone on the figure eight mode, really dead areas at 90 degrees on both sides. Continue around to 180 degrees, another lobe of sensitivity here so you can interview somebody across the table from you. Continue around to the second null area and then rotate and end at the front. Now I am on the stereo mode and you will hear me moving all the way around your head in your headphones or on the speakers. Really big dead area in the rear continue around to the right channel, I believe, and then rotating and ending at the front. And lastly, I am rotating the Yeti X on the omnidirectional polar pattern. You should hear no real change in sound as I move all the way around back to the front. 
Now I am speaking into the microphone using the cardioid mode, which just mainly picks up audio in the front of the microphone, and this is how it sounds. Now I am on the figure eight polar pattern, meaning it picks up audio in the front and in the rear of the microphone, and then it has some dead spots along the side, and this is how it sounds. Now I am on the stereo setting, which is what you will want to use if you are doing ASMR or anything. It creates a stereo signal, both left and right, and uh, this is how it sounds. And lastly, we are on the omnidirectional polar pattern, and this picks up audio equally all the way around the microphone, and this is how it sounds. Now for a quick example, I want to show you why you will benefit from getting the microphone off of the provided desktop stand and onto a boom arm. And this is how the Yeti sounds when I'm able to get the microphone a little bit closer to my mouth by placing it on a boom arm using a 5 8 to 3 8 inch microphone stand adapter. Now I am bumping the desk while the Yeti is in the provided desktop stand to show you how much of that it picks up in the recording. And now I'm bumping the desk with the Yeti on a boom arm, and this is how much it's picking up. And now I am typing on a keyboard with the Yeti on the desktop stand to show you how much of that it picks up. Now I am typing on a keyboard with Cherry MX Blues to see how much of my voice versus how much of the keyboard it picks up. And now for you elite gamers, I am typing on the sad W keys. Now I'm right on top of the blue Yeti on the cardioid mode to show you what kind of proximity effect this thing has. About three inches off of the Yeti with the microphone pointed at the corner of my mouth and this is how it sounds. About one foot away from the microphone, two feet away from the microphone, and about four feet away from the microphone. Here's a quick test of how the Blue Yeti X sounds in a decently treated room about six inches away from my mouth on the cardioid polar pattern. And here's a quick example of how the Blue Yeti X sounds in a completely untreated room on the cardioid polar pattern about six inches off of my mouth. Now let's see how well this microphone does at rejecting plosives. Please bring pizza pronto. Please bring pizza pronto. Please bring pizza pronto. Now I'm gonna go ahead and throw the Yeti X into my box of doom so we can measure the noise floor of this thing. And here's an example of how loud the microphone is when you press the button to mute it. Now for good measure, I want to do a very quick spoken word comparison between the Blue Yeti X and the Blue Yeti. So right now, I am just about three inches off of the Yeti X, and this is how the microphone sounds. And now I'm about three inches off of the classic Blue Yeti. I have it in the exact same position, and I have level matched the microphones to the best of my ability, and here is how the audio compares. Okay, so right now the Yeti X is set to 24-bit 48 kilohertz, which is the only real option that you have. With an I.O. buffer size of 64 samples, you have a round trip latency of 9 milliseconds or 3.5 milliseconds output. When we jump up to 128 samples, we have 11.7 milliseconds round trip or 4.7 milliseconds output. And when we jump up to 256 samples, 17 milliseconds round trip and 7.5 milliseconds output. <laughs> Thank you. 
All my fears have come to be Another Yeti haunting me I refuse to go to sleep Cause the Yeti haunts my dreams Save me Honestly, it's... <laughs> They'll just keep coming and coming and coming. I, I Stop. <laughs> okay, so here is what you will see when you open up the Logitech G-Hub software. You are able to adjust your Yeti's gain as well as the polar pattern. You can also adjust the color of the lighting in case you want to match your setup or in case you're colorblind like me and want a little bit of different colors so you're better able to see it. You're also able to adjust the settings for the headphone output. You can do some EQ to it for the computer playback, as well as adjust the volume and the mix between the microphone and the PC. But the main thing that's cool here is the blue voice. So let me go ahead and enable that. And now I've engaged the Blue Voice software, which allows you to add effects in real time from EQ to high pass to de-essing, noise reduction, compressor, expander, and even a limiter. One issue I have with all of these presets, the gain out of the box is way too high. I imagine a lot of people are just going to click the preset and go. And you can see in this meter, even when I drop it down to 25%, I am clipping or getting close to clipping, I found that I need to have it down around 11 or 15 in that area. And if it is set up at 70% where they have it set, way too hot. I'm guessing the reason they do that is they expect people to have the microphone really far away from them. So I have just moved the microphone two feet away from me, and this is how it sounds with the FM station setting and a microphone two feet away. But what I would recommend is getting the microphone closer to your mouth and decreasing the gain because the presets are just set way too high. Now, something else that's really cool about this software is that it does allow you a lot of granular control over each of the effects. So if you were to click on the three dot menu, you're able to adjust the attack, release, and ratio of your de-esser as well as the threshold and the frequency and it also shows you the amount of gain reduction that is occurring with the de-esser. Then if we do the same thing with compressor, we can see what we can adjust here. We can do the attack, release, threshold, and the ratio, which is 12 to 1. That's really high. I very rarely go above 4 to 1, so 12 to 1 is, that's crazy. Same thing with the expander, the gate, the limiter, and the noise reduction. And that's pretty much all there is to this. I'm not going to do a full tutorial on it. I've already covered it with the Logitech gaming headset a couple of weeks ago. But that's a very brief overview of the Logitech G-Hub software for the Blue Yeti, as well as the presets and the Blue Voice that is available. All right. I don't have any funny things here. It's an updated Blue Yeti. And first up in terms of pros, I think it is great that they have upgraded the microphone to be 24-bit 48 kilohertz. I also really like the zero latency monitoring on this thing. It's also awesome that you can control all of the settings directly from the microphone, excluding all of the Blue Voice plugins. And it is a pretty full package microphone if you are just looking to get off the ground. And then in terms of cons, I find the multifunction button on the front of the microphone to be a little bit of a pain when you have to hold it for a second to switch to the next option, then hold for another second to move back to the next option, then hold it for another second to go back to the beginning. Just kind of a pain to work with. Another con is the placement of the polar pattern selection switch, because when you are grabbing the microphone to move it around, it makes it incredibly easy to unintentionally press that button and end up on a polar pattern that you don't want to be on. The prior or classic Yeti had a dial that you would have to turn, making it much more difficult to unintentionally switch between patterns. And also, I hate the fact that the Blue Voice software is only available on Windows right now. Next, as far as my overall 
thoughts on the electric guitar. It is not the best sound I have ever heard, but I think it is pretty usable. I found it to be a little bit boxy sounding, but that would be easily solvable with a little bit of an EQ and post to cut out some of those lower frequencies. Then on the acoustic guitar, I thought the figure eight polar pattern sounded really nice in terms of tone, but when I threw on the stereo setting, it just brought the guitar to life and it made stereo miking the guitar incredibly easy compared to getting a stereo bar, getting a microphone or a couple of microphones and miking it up and getting all the angles right. Really cool sound out of it on this stereo setting. Then for singing, I really wasn't too keen of the tone of the cardioid polar pattern. It just sounded a little bit too gritty in the top end, but when I threw on the figure eight setting, it really smoothed out some of those grittier tones and made it a lot smoother sounding. But if you're recording in a more open, less treated room, using that figure eight polar pattern will introduce a lot of additional room noise. And lastly, for spoken word, I think it does offer a very crisp and clear sound, making your recording very intelligible. But at the same time, those upper frequencies are a little bit too gritty for my liking and maybe even a little bit over boosted. And to wrap up, would I recommend this microphone? Both yes and no. I think it's a great microphone for home studio musicians who just want to get started with recording. I say that because it is a relatively simple microphone, it gives you a lot of options to play with, and it makes stereo miking stuff incredibly easy. You can just throw this on the stereo mode in front of an acoustic guitar and you're going to get a pretty rad sound. I would also recommend it for people who are desperate for that live processing but want it at a relatively cheap price point because as you start to get into live real-time processing, it can get very expensive very quickly. But on that note, do not just select one of the Blue Voice presets and go. They are all very aggressive to my ears. I think you need to take some time and fine tune the settings for your own room, your own voice, and your own recording level. But a quick side note there, if you do already have a microphone that you can connect to your computer that you're happy with the sound of and you want that real-time processing, you can download Voice Meter Banana, which is a free piece of software, and that allows you to add some real time or very low latency processing to your microphone input. Also, even though I find ASMR pretty disgusting, no offense, I think the Yetis are a pretty good entry point to get that binaural stereo sound, although I think you might be able to get away with using the older Yetis, which are probably going to be discounted pretty greatly now. And lastly, for gaming and streaming, I know you won't listen to me when I say that there are better options out there, so let me give you a few tips and tricks to get better sound out of the Yeti for those applications. Step one, if you are the only person talking, set the microphone to the cardioid mode, which is the mode that looks like a little butt. Next, do not use the provided desktop stand because that will pick up every keyboard click and bump of your desk. Get a boom arm or some other kind of microphone stand and put the microphone on that. Third, get the microphone closer to your mouth. You may want the microphone four feet away, but guess what? Four feet away, the microphone is gonna sound terrible, so please get the microphone closer to your mouth. Fourth, speak into the correct side of the microphone. This is not a top address microphone. I have seen one too many people speaking into the microphone like this. Do not do it. It is a side address microphone. Speaking into it like this sounds terrible. And lastly, if you do have loud sound sources in your room, like a computer fan or a mechanical keyboard, try to place those items in the dead area of the polar pattern, which on the cardioid polar pattern would be 180 degrees or the exact rear of the microphone. But on the other hand, if you are just buying this because you have seen everybody else using it, stop. In the words of PewDiePie, stop buying the Blue Yeti microphones. My God, <laughs> it's like, oh, I gotta, I guess I'll stream. I guess I'll buy the mic that everyone has. Stop. Just because you see so many people using this does not mean that this is the best option for you. Just do a little bit more research, find what microphone will work best for you. And if you land on the Yeti, more power to you. Also, if you don't foresee yourself needing all four polar patterns of the Blue Yeti, for example, a gamer who just does solo talking, you would only need a cardioid polar pattern. 
I would recommend looking for a microphone that just has a single polar pattern and does everything else that you need because you may be able to save a little bit of money or you may be able to get a better sound out of the microphone. And I would also not recommend this to any podcasters who do not have an absolute need for live processing. If you are recording directly to your computer, I think there are much better options like the Behringer XM8500, a cheap USB audio interface, and then record those into a free DAW like Audacity, GarageBand, or even Reaper, and learn how to process in that DAW, and you'll be much better off than picking up the Yeti. Now before I end the video, because I wasn't a big fan of any of the presets in the G-Hub software, I did go through and make my own preset that I thought was a little bit better and much more subtle. So if you want that, let me know in the comments down below and I'll upload that to Logitech server or I will go ahead and make a standalone video walking you through everything that I did so you can recreate that. I'll also be trying something a little bit differently with this video because I've received a lot of requests for it, as well as a lot of complaints about YouTube's compression. I am going to be uploading just the audio from this review to podcastage.com in either a lossless version if I can get that to work, or in a high quality lossy version, an MP3 or an M4A. So you can go check that out at podcastage.com. All right, that's gonna wrap up for today. I hope you learned something about the Blue Yeti X, and I hope I was able to help you make a more informed decision on whether or not you want to pick this up. If you found the video fun, interesting, or helpful, Go ahead and give me a thumbs up. If you hated it, give me a big old thumbs down. If you want to support the channel and become one of these amazing people over here, you can go ahead and click that join button and join at the $5 tier or higher. That really does help me continue to bring you these videos. Thank you all so much for watching. Thank you all so much for listening. I'll see you next time. Bye.